Hello everyone, this is Mr. 13 Things uh, back on the sketch up here as I start exploring uh, putting together my final paper if you would for training my kids on the things they should know so they can get to the point where they can use the tools to solve some severe problems. Um, so, so the tools being math, CAD, logic, art, music, uh, and going from there. So what I'm going to do is go through a real quick drafting or drawing of a spiral and then kind of hopefully show you code wise and mathematically um, how to do it as well so you can realize that CAD is not always the answer usually CAD I'm sorry don't use the word CAD uh, using some sort of graphic computer thing CAD has some connotation in the industry I'm going to show SketchUp because it is completely cool and radical what I'm going to do right away is show you when you get into SketchUp the kind of things you might want to do is very often get your toolbar set so you don't have things you don't need. So I'm going to for once turn off Sketchy Solids. I'm going to View, Toolbars, Sandbox. I'm going to keep the large buttons here. I'm also going to let you know anytime you go into a drawing, you would always, a model, you would always want to know what your model is units are and I'm going to set this to literally decimal and in inches. The reason I'm going to do that, believe it or not, is that the base unit in SketchUp is in fact inches. Who'd have thought? Uh, based on some software, last software company uh, from Boulder, Colorado. Uh, it's just one of those things we uh, live with and go on. Personally, I believe knowing English imperial units and metric units like we do in America can be a net positive if we know them both. Uh, and so just so you know one of the formal definitions that does exist is 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. We can talk later about the survey inch. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to draft and play around. I'm going to draft. What I've done is I've clicked and started to go along the red axis. I'm going to hit one here and it should draft something that's one long. I typically have to hit a space bar here and then you see it's gone. So I'm going to try it again. I'm going to click here. I hit one, and now I got to finish this out. Now I hit the space bar. I get rid of this one. I hit right click, erase, and then I'm going to hit zoom extents, and you can see I got a couple of these around. Edit, cut. All right. So I've got now something that's one in length. I'm going to now start to draw the spiral, and the spiral I'm going to talk about here. I'm going to right click. Entity info tells me it's one inch. Pretty well done. And we're going to talk about how to draft this kind of really cool spiral. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab first, grab the tool, which would be R, I believe. I'm going to hold that, hit an Alt key or a Control key on Windows, and multiply it, have it turn 90 degrees. I now have something that if I draft here, if I draft this line from here to here, that line should very well be square root of 2. So entity info, you could take out your calculator, and in fact that's what it is within some degree of precision. Now I'm going to need to take this and do another unit of 1 from here perpendicular. So what I'd like to do is to offset this. would be. And this is one thing you're going to see in uh, SketchUp. It's not always the easiest thing to do. So I'm going to try here to, on the fly to show you how important it is very quickly to learn to do this. I did that wrong. I'm going to try it again. And what I do it this time, I'm going to turn on the axes. So I'm going to hit and try it again. I'm going to go my axis there, there. That's my axes, which means now when I do something like this, and grab this thing, I can hit a control key and gonna go out a distance of one. And you see it did it one now, which means if I draft from there to there, I'm pretty happy with myself right now, believe it or not. <laughs> um, I don't think you necessarily need to care, but now this is one, this is the square root of two, so believe it or not, this becomes the square root of three, which, when you go ahead and think about square root of 3, many of us memorize it as 97.56. I'll explain why that. 1.73.86, 6 times 2, however you occur. I'm going to erase this and erase this to clear it out. And now I'm going to hit this, right click. And what I do is I go over the top 
right click and then entity info there it is 1.73 now we're back to how to use our once again we're going to go to here we're going to set our axes is up and they can't you see how it locks it wants to lock you got to make sure that it's locking correctly and now once again we're going to take this using the offset not the offset tool per se but the control copy if you're hitting the control button move it in a distance of once we said one there it is there's lots of different ways to do that I like to still think about a little bit how this is done construction wise and so once again I'm going to go ahead and draft from there to here this one of course should be if you think about it this was the square root of three and, and one this should be a length of four I'm going to hit and erase here I'll even get rid of that one and right click entity info there it is the square root of four we're going to go one more up to the square root of five just to get the the uh the pattern here mostly what i'm doing is something i've never really played around with because i'm a bad sketchup person i go between math and sketchup and lots of others but sketchup does rock it's available free to any k-12 institution i think in 46 states one page letter to get the pro version and you'll see here this is not the pro version what I'm going to do now here again is reset my coordinate system which would be a rotation matrix in math what's weird about this it wants to jump if you would all right so now we're pretty good now again we're going to go ahead and what did we say we're going to do I think we'll try to do it this way we can go there it wants to lock along that axis and I can say one so it did it the same way Remember, this is the square root of two, four, which was two, and this is one. This should be the square root of five. And I don't have a number for the square root of five, though I know the average of one in the square root of five is the golden ratio. So right now we have the start of a spiral. The next one, of course, we'll try one more. If we would, let's try it a different way here. We grab our axes here. We're going to go there. Now we're kind of okay. It's locking up these axes. That's pretty good. And so now I can go here. Pretty interesting. I show it the direction in SketchUp and then I say minus one. And it does that. So lots of cool intuitive ways to stick things in SketchUp. Um, you know, it takes some hints from you. And so all of a sudden this should be the square root of six, which is the square root of three times the square root of two, if you would right click entity info all right so we're going to guess that that's right and what you start to see now here is the spiral this will go around and now the one thing i do have a hard problem doing is how to set this back i hit i think i hit that i have to i'll do that now it's arbitrary if i go on top of it and i i say reset it should take it back to zero let me go ahead and hit that uh, and I guess I started out wrong. It didn't completely reset. All right, well, we're going to live with that. That looks like that's supposed to be there. So um, I will review that next thing in the next uh, SketchUp video I do when I actually play this one around. So what you see here is a spiral that shows you very quickly how to construction-wise make something that's the square root of one, the square root of two, the square root of three, the square root of four, the square root of five, the square root of six, all the way there. It's got a name, it's really cool, and it ties us to getting kids this intuitive knowledge of what the square root of two, what these irrational numbers are. At the same time, they're doing some pretty cool stuff, doing some neat art, doing some uh, sequences and series, putting it all together so that they can get, by the time they're in 8th grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, the math just becomes a tool and it's not something mysterious. They can use it to solve some of the great problems that we have laid upon them. Thanks for listening.